In today's video, I'll be teaching us all how to deconstruct lace fabric for embellishment purposes, as well as how to create spiral beading pattern on outfits to create a gorgeous design similar to what we have on the screen. If you'll be interested in everything that I just spoke about, please make sure to watch this video all the way through. Like the video after watching or while watching. If you find everything that you're learning valuable, feel free to share this video with your friend. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. All right, guys, let's get straight into today's tutorial. Let's go. Hello all and welcome back to another tutorial. Before I jump straight into what we'll be working on today, there are certain housekeeping stuff that I'd like to share with us and starting off with this item. This tool called tambouring, the amount of controversy and complication it has caused, I'm almost now thinking should I get rid of using it totally from the channel because it seems to be getting some of us confused. And I'm going to reiterate something that I always say in every bidding tutorial that I share here. Except in cases where I'm bidding on an outfit that I plan to wear or that I plan to, that an outfit that is meant for wearing. When I come on the channel to share bidding tutorial, those tutorials are for teaching purpose, is for education, is for instruction, is not for designing or anything like that. A lot of times I see questions from people saying, oh, after I've bidded on the tambouring, how do I transfer what I bidded to an outfit? Guys, if you are making an outfit, if you want to use my tutorials as a guideline while bidding, an outfit please do your bidding directly on the outfit you're making okay if you're trying to bid on a blouse for example and i'm teaching you the dotted bidding pattern using my tambour ring please don't first of all go and struggle to buy tambour ring then after you've bidded on tambour ring you'll be thinking how do i transfer what i bidded on this tambour ring to this blouse that i made guys whatever i'm doing if it's a dotted bidding pattern do your dotted bidding pattern directly on your dress or your blouse or your skirt, whatever it is you're bidding on, okay? You don't need to... Getting a tambour ring is not compulsory, okay? It's not mandatory to have a tambour ring before bidding. And if you're bidding on an outfit, if you know, okay, having the outfit stay in place and stay put while bidding is a struggle, you guys will need to spend money, invest in getting a body form. And your body forms are typically sold by people that sell sewing accessories, okay? So find out do your research i'm not going to be able to do that research for you guys okay go online go to your local markets and ask for people that sell body form find out the price if you need to save up to get the body form save up if you if you have the money buy it on the spot and wear the outfits you're trying to bid on on the body form and bid while you have your outfit on the body form right don't go and buy tambour ring to bid a wedding dress it will not work okay invest in the body form and bid and while you are online i mean a lot of all these big designers that i talk about from time to time on my channel they share behind the same footage of how they bid on outfits please don't just be on social media just for banter and vibes please learn as well while on there most of the things that i learn a lot of the tips and tricks that i learned that i come on here to share with you guys are things that i also learned a lot of which are from social media okay instagram tiktok youtube okay don't just be scrolling through and just feeding yourself chaff online. Make sure you're also getting inspired, getting educated while also being entertained online, okay? Watch a lot of this behind the scene footage from these big designers that you're aspiring to be like or even be better than. Watch what they do and learn from them, okay? Most of these people share footage of them having the outfit that they've, that they've made on a body form or on a mannequin or... or on a person right and they are bidding while the outfit is worn on that person learn from that i know that okay i need to get this tool if i want to bid like this okay so enough of the pep talk on this tambouring so the conclusion and the summary of everything i just said is tambouring is not compulsory i only got it because i share tutorials on bidding and this tool will make my tutorials easy to digest, I believe, for people that are watching my tutorials. Let's jump straight into today's tutorial. So today we are going to be doing something different from what we typically do. There's something called applique filling and patching, basically, when it comes to accessorization. Today we are doing something different. So I have my illusion net here. And I'm just going to quickly go ahead and attach this illusion net to this tambour ring real quick. This is a bigger size of tambour ring. I believe this one is the 10 inch diameter size of tambouring i also got it off of aliexpress just in case someone is curious 
all right guys so now that my illusion net is secured here this is in the list that i'm going to be working so there's a way you can also accessorize outfits i believe i've shared an inspiration on the intro of this video so some of these outfits they do what they call applicate the construction and filling on illusion nets just to accessorize so imagine i have a full dress made from this lace outfit and i also incorporated illusion net at the neckline of the outfit okay please use the power of your imagination i can go ahead and cut patches from the design that i have right here on this lace fabric and use it as a form of embellishment for the illusion portion of this outfit okay so imagine i made a dress and i also want to use some of these lace patterns on this outfit to design that net all i need to do is pick out what portion of the lace material do i want to use to design this outfit that i'm trying to design i will then figure out oh how can i cut off this portion and then once i've determined that i begin to cut off the portion of the lace that i'm trying to work on set it aside and then go ahead to tack it onto the fabric now that all of that has been said i'm going to go ahead to now cut off i think i like this four square like shape thing that we have going on on this lace fabric so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to deconstruct it for this de deconstruction you can either use your scissors or soldering iron okay any one of these tools will help you just deconstruct these shapes and then allow everything move smoothly for you but if you don't want to use soldering iron get a small scissors and get to work so i'm going to use scissors and also use soldering iron in this video just so we get the gist so let's start off with scissors first of all so i'm cutting the areas where I have nets going on. Alright guys, so this is what we have here for now. The only difference between using your scissors to cut off patterns like this and using a soldering iron is your soldering iron is going to melt off all these can we see all these stray nets that we are seeing here? If I had used a soldering iron, it's going to melt off all these stray nets and make everything look nice. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my soldering iron and just use it to tidy up the edge of this fabric. Alright my friends, so now I have three of these patterns. Please take note that I'm cutting this pattern because this is the only thing that makes sense from the type of lace that i'm working with if you're working with a different type of lace for those that know lace materials lace fabrics please walk into your fabric shop if you don't know what lace is walk into your fabric shop tell your vendor please show me lace fabrics they will show you they come in different patterns different colors so depending on the fabric you're working with look at it analyze it and think oh which pattern will make sense for me to work with while trying to accessorize this dress okay this is the pattern that i've cut out from my lace fabric i could stop here and use these patterns that i've cut out as patches on my dress and move on with life okay let me put it on this um illusion net that i have here all i'm just going to do now if i were to work with this all i'll do is just find a way to just tack these onto this illusion net on this dress that i'm or <laughs> i keep saying dress on this thing that i'm working with i'll just find a way to tag these patterns on the illusion net and design my work right but if i want to also take this up a notch what i'll do now is i'll also go ahead and further cut these shapes that look like letter c cut them into pieces and now place them strategically on this illusion net i hope everything that i'm explaining in this video is sticking to us and we kind of understand it just so i'm going to do this for just one piece of this um pattern that i've cut out i'm going to divide these letter c's i have four of them one two three four cut them and then see how the placements will work on this illusion net the next thing i'll also do is also teach us how to tack this onto fabric for my people that like glue you people can come now and say ah why would i be tacking when i can just glue it if you like glue do what works for you it's not for me that will come and tell you what to do right but personally i would rather tack this onto the fabric that i'm working with the main fabric so that everything just looks nice all right so i'm going to go ahead now use my soldering iron to divide these four letters that i have here and then we'll move on to the next stage sees from the main lace fabric that I was able to deconstruct and just place right here on my tambourine the bigger size okay 
the placement varies it's now your job as a fashion designer to look at the most aesthetically pleasing way of making the placements of your lace your deconstructed appliques right is you that will now determine how do i place it that will make this outfit look nice that one that skill cannot be taught is experience that will teach you and your ability to just practice and try out new stuff with time you become a professional and just know how to make things look very beautiful so i can't come on here now and tell you that oh this is how you will do it and you will learn how to become someone that can like place appliques nicely it just takes time and practice anyway the next thing I'm going to teach us now is how to tack these types of deconstructed appliques onto fabric and just use it as a form of accessory. So for this purpose, I'm going to be using my little tambour ring. I'm going to say it here again. If you don't have a tambour ring, wear the outfit after you've already made it on a body form and then begin to tack. For this beading, I'm going to be using a size 11 beading needle. This is what a beading needle looks like, just in case you are new and you don't know what a beading needle is. It typically comes like this. Please walk into your local sewing accessory shop and tell them that you want to buy beading needle. This is what it looks like and this is where the size is written, size 11. And I'm also working with fishing line, okay? You can also use what we call the invisible thread if you don't want to use fishing line. I'm only using fishing line because that's what I have in my needle at the moment. I'm just going to use that to teach us. But if you have invisible thread, which is what I'm holding here, use that. So after you've determined how you want to place the applique on your illusion net, you can even place this applique on regular fabric. Imagine if you made a satin dress and you just want to accessorize it. Use a mic. Of course, if I'm using this type of applique on a satin dress i'm using a dress i'm using this color of applique on a dress that has a color that matches this so say maybe a light blue dress or sky blue dress and i just want to put some appliques on it i will use this type of color don't use basically what i'm saying is make sure that the colors match that's the summary of everything that i'm saying so imagine that this is your net area so you're just sewing this onto fabric All right, friends, so you see how this looks. Imagine this on an outfit, absolutely stunning. It's going to look absolutely stunning. We remember the video at the intro. We saw how lace parchments were used in creating awesome, awesome outfits, like I shared at the intro of this video. So this is what it looks like. The first thing you want to do is to draw your pattern on whatever fabric or portion of an outfit you are trying to bead on, okay? If you are trying to bead on the waist point, on the neckline, on the sleeve, on the front or the bust, whatever, okay? Even if it's on the hip point of whatever outfit it is that you are trying to bead on, draw your pattern first of all and please use a fabric marker or your tailor's chalk, alright? Don't use biro like me. I'm using biro because I need the color of what I'm doing to show properly on camera so you guys can see. Don't do this, alright? I just need to point that out, alright? So this is me just freehand drawing the pattern on this piece of fabric. This fabric is called felt. I get questions about this, about this a lot, okay? So it's called felt and I like to use it for tutorials. This is the bead I'm using. I'm using seed beads okay in color blue and i'm using the size 12 beading needle and a piece of polyester thread use any type of bead you like the beads that will be perfect for this type of beading work are your seed beads your sand beads your glass beads okay your broken beads you could use those types of beads all right but feel free to do whatever you like ultimately you could also use sequins and i'm also going to be showing us how we can incorporate sequins into this design in this particular tutorial so endeavor that you're not distracted and watch this video to the end i hope you guys saw the way i passed my needle and thread at this point you want to pay attention you are passing your needle such that it's just going through the fabric it's not getting to the back of the fabric can you guys see what i did there if you didn't see i'm going to do this a couple more times just so you get the gist watch closely and when using polyester thread in beading chances are you would get situations where your thread might tangle up take your time to just loosen it up and then continue your work if you are also using invisible thread invisible invisible thread tangles up a lot i think that's why a lot of beaders don't like to use it but 
ultimately that's still the best option because it just allows your work look incredibly neat but the downside the con of using invisible thread is that it will tangle up on you and it will test your patience basically so yeah that's just something i need to point out just in case you're working and doing these things on your own and you're like oh my god is this how this thing usually tangles up yes that's how it does so you need a lot of patience all right also you can use fishing line but the problem with fishing line as most people might have noticed is that with fishing line when you knot up your work it tends to be chunky and it just doesn't give the effect that polyester thread and invisible thread would typically give in beading ball. Ultimately, the choice is yours. So just use whatever piece of item you like. Can you see how my thread has just been tangling up? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So also, I'm picking up seven pieces of sand beads or seed beads. Honestly, I don't know. I'm just picking up seven pieces of these beads. Feel free to tweak it. You can pick four. You can pick three. Just do it the way you like okay i just like to come here with inspiration like i always say and allow you guys just do whatever you please with with whatever inspiration it is that i bring on here and with counting okay when you start off your work with four beads for example maintain that same number till you finish up the curve that you're working on don't pick four bead then i pick five then i pick six pick seven like your work will not give what it's supposed to give okay you need to maintain the uniformity of your beads if you're starting with four maintain that four if you are starting with five maintain that five if you are starting with seven maintain that seven until you get to the end of the curve and just do something beautiful all right beading can be very therapeutic okay if you need something that will allow you to just focus like this is something you should add to your um hobby or side hustle or something that you like to do even after you've made a dress with your tailor and you're like oh, this dress is too basic and you you're just looking for something to keep yourself busy or something to just accessorize your dress with just pick up your beads and bead on the pattern if it's ankara fabric just look for some parts of the ankara and bead on it and just transform your dress or whatever outfit it is into something absolutely beautiful i'm going to keep quiet now and probably speed up things so we don't get bored before we move to the next type of spiral beading pattern that we are going to be working on in this video if you enjoy watching which i'm sure you would okay please remember to like the video if you're not subscribed to the channel as well what are you waiting for please hit the subscribe button i'd love to have you as part of this online community that i'm growing on here on youtube please subscribe and remember to also turn on the bell notification right beside the subscribe button that bell is going to help you know whenever i drop a tutorial and you'll be the first to know that the tutorial is up on the channel and you can come watch okay all right guys i'm going to keep quiet now allow you guys pay attention also if you have questions please don't hesitate to drop me questions in the comment section okay i'm always happy to read from you guys all right so please watch and then when we get to the end of this portion we'll move on to the next stage in this particular tutorial All right, guys, so I'm pretty much almost done with this spiral. But what is a Fumi Biolawari designs tutorial without something sparkly? I decided to add cloth stone into the center of this spiral, but I decided to use this piece of silver cloth stone at the center. And just in case you don't know how to sew cloth stone onto fabric, you could watch this. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just sewing this piece of cloth stone at the center of this spiral can we see what i did there this is just to add a little bit of spruce spruce to this particular design so you could try it on your dresses as well after sewing your spiral just in case everything is still looking too basic and you're trying to just light up the entire look feel free to add a piece of cloth stone or any other type of gem that you like to the style and just make something incredibly beautiful right after attaching this cloth stone to the center of the spiral i'm also going to go ahead to just complete the spiral and close it up and then it's be time for us to move on to the next type of spiral beading pattern that you can create okay and this time we'll be using what we call sequence i have its whole tutorial also on my channel where i talk about different types of gems and embellishment options for designers okay feel free to check out that video there i spoke about cloth stones sequence rhinestones different things honestly like that video is really really insightful so feel free to go check it out i'll also link it on the screen for you but 
in this video i'm going to talk about how you can use sequence to create a gorgeous spiral design if you remember or if you looked at what we have on my thumbnail that picture is a dress that was made by vicky james and honestly you guys can see that that dress looked absolutely gorgeous so yeah i'm going to move on to that stage right after we complete this spiral like so all right and Pay attention again so yeah this is the end of the spiral this is what we have here imagine this or maybe the neck point of a dress or on the sleeve or something like imagine incorporating this it will look absolutely gorgeous this is me just tidying up my beading okay by just knotting up this is how you just knot up you pass your thread and then just knot it up like so and then cut off whatever excess you have so this is the sequence i'm working with i'm working with those silver colored sequence and i'm just picking up my needle and thread and just passing it through another line of um spiral line that i've drawn on the fabric all right and with sewing sequence i have a separate tutorial on so how to sew sequence on a straight line okay with working with curves it might get a bit complicated so i suggest that you watch my beading tutorial playlist on that playlist i have a plethora of videos on how you can start your beading journey you don't have to go to school of beading like i always say all you need is a fumibi olaware designs beading tutorial if you can just watch my videos and practice religiously trust me you will do something amazing with your work okay so feel free to check out that um, playlist like i said to just learn all about stuff like this but this is how i'm going to be sewing my sequence onto the spiral like i said draw your pattern first draw your spiral and then start working your way around the spiral imagine if i didn't draw out these outlines and i'm just using my eyes to just gauge things chances are first of all my work will not be straight and it will just look unkept the reason why you're drawing your pattern is to maintain uniformity and cleanliness with the end result of your work so i'm going to keep quiet now allow you guys watch the way i'm just sewing on this sequence around this spiral and then i'll just do a couple more stuff here and there and then we'll see the final result of this particular tutorial again if you don't if you forgot okay if you don't remember to hit the like button this is another gentle reminder to please 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 hit the like button that's how i know that you guys got value from watching any one of my video most times as creators when we post videos on here it's hard for us to get feedback from you guys especially for those that are always shy to comment but when we see the number of likes that we get on a video we know that okay yeah the people loved this video and we are able to know the kind of stuff to keep coming back with on here on our you know on our channels on youtube okay so please like the video also if you have not subscribed please don't wait for any reason just go ahead to hit the subscribe button and turn on your post notification so you'll be the first to know anytime i have a video also if after watching all the way to the end you still have questions please ask all right friends so this is how far i went with the curved beading pattern so as you all might know this fabric that i'm using is called felt f-e-l-t because i know someone will probably still ask me again but it's called felt however if you are doing this on a dress or on a headpiece you can just instead of drawing on just like a flat piece of fabric like this just draw the pattern they are trying to create on your dress okay right after you know either you sewed it or you received it from a fashion designer draw out the pattern you are trying to create i simply just did this um scribble kind of thing on this piece of fabric because this is supposed to be a tutorial okay so you draw out the pattern follow the follow the lines that you've drawn and create gorgeous designs i incorporated sequence here so you can use sequins, you can use beads, you can even use cloth stones, okay? Feel free to come up with your own twist to the design, but I hope you guys got the gist of this particular tutorial. If you did, please be sure to like this video. Please hit the like button. Also, if you're not subscribed, please do well to subscribe to the channel. I share insightful tutorials similar to what you just watched on here on the channel and i have a lot a whole library of videos that will be very helpful to you and your business or to your friend okay if you have a friend share this channel with the person and yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video and i can't wait to see you in another one bye